Aren't I sweet? Yeah! I'd like to know one good reason why I even stay here. Oh. Okay, so there's one good reason. Ooh la la. <gasps> Looking good, princess. Especially from this angle. <laughs> He's such a perv. Uh, welcome back to another episode of our Holiday Nesmus special. I'm your host, Gaming J, and forgive me, I was just catching up with some 80s cartoons in my uh, retro room here. I got some uh, holiday appropriate uh, California raisins playing here and other various other claymations. The 80s was really a time of, uh, you know, everyone was really interested in claymation and stuff. It was... I was I really like claymation ever since Gumby as a kid, but yeah, California raisins I was all into. We can actually uh, turn up the volume here. Oh, hold on. How do we do this? There we go. And we have to replay this video. There we go. And uh, Christmas Eve, fellas, man. Mm -hmm. What'd you say? Mm -hmm. Hey, fly. Mm -hmm. No kidding. Hey, I really enjoyed that. Hey, we put on a really good nice show. Man. Ooh, they like hey. that grapevine. Mm -hmm. It's all deserted out here, though. Did you see that big old grapevine? <laughs> Excellent gig, guys. Uh-oh. There goes the last bus. So call me a cab. Hey, man, you're a cab. Oh. <laughs> no sweat, it's Christmas. All right, I'm just going to fast forward here. So yeah, the raisins were just like a series of claymation raisins that sang. Apparently they existed to advertise uh, actual uh, like raisins that California was selling, but I didn't know that as a kid. They were just another cool, weird 80s thing. So you can see I've decked the room out a little bit with some VCRs. Um, and there are some tapes and stuff that I've been slowly collecting. Video and Arcade Top 10, if you know what that is. Uh, you're in the know, but anyway today we are here to play the next game in our holiday Nesmus uh, List and so I'll turn the volume down here so it doesn't distract us um, Oh, I will say one other Kind of cool thing about this emulator. So if you go into the settings um, There's this option for random Easter egg events They're sort of spooky uh, Anything could happen I've always wondered what this is, and I've always left it on in the emulator. I've never noticed anything. But when I first installed all the VCRs in this room, I uh, went in and I got a bunch of videos off YouTube. So I have, like, you know, a Nintendo training video. Um, if you guys want to see this, here, we'll put it in a VCR. Um, we need one that's actually empty. Okay, hold on. So let's uh, eject what's in here. Oh, the uh, Nintendo Interactive Store Display. So yeah, you can you can tell there's a theme to what I'm putting on here. But if you put this video in and you play it, um, then you can watch, you know, whatever. Um, so whatever whatever video you've downloaded off of YouTube, you can play it in a in a cassette tape form, which is actually uh, totally awesome. But anyway, I grabbed a random tape and I threw it in, and then the TV started to play but it wasn't playing the tape that it was supposed to be. Instead, it was playing the video from The Ring. I don't know if you guys have seen the horror movie The Ring, um, but it's like this weird, creepy art house uh, film. And the whole premise of the video is that after you watch it, you die in seven days. And so I, I, w I was watching all these videos come up of videos I had been inserting because I was checking you know, uh, the tapes. And then what ended up happening is the ring video was playing on one of those tapes and it freaked me out for a second because I was like, wait, did I download that? Um, and then I pulled the tape out and the tape said what I, the video I had actually downloaded off of YouTube. So it was not the ring. And I was like, whoa. And I put it back in and then the tape played fine. But yeah, so I think, uh, I think one of the spooky Easter eggs, and this is totally awesome. I can't believe the developers thought to do this, but one of your tapes can be corrupted into the ring tape. It's so cool. I kind of uh, hope that there are other things. Um, there are also other ones like your mom calling, uh, which I haven't heard yet, but apparently it's listed here. 
So spooky, anything could happen. We're going to leave it on spooky because who knows, maybe we'll catch it on film sometime, but there could be other spooky things that happen. Anyway, hopefully nothing too spooky happens for us today. Today we are playing uh, my selection from the Nesmus list, which I don't even have the game ready here, but uh, let's see. It is... Let's see if it even has a, a, a cover or not. Um, I don't want to spoil... The, I guess it's in the title. You guys already know. It's Nuts and Milk. Um, H-I-J-K-L-M. They do the alphabet. Sometimes remember the order of letters. Nuts and Milk, a Japanese-only game. Um, hold on, drop that for a second. What do we got in here? Oh, yeah, we have uh, extra burger time. As a kid, did you ever have two copies of the same game? Like, look at this. We have... Okay, I'm rotating this crazily. We have two burger times. Look at that. Burger time and burger time. I feel like it was very uncommon to have two copies of the same game as a kid. I also love how in these... These, like, models, it's so hard to rotate with the mouse. I don't know which way to do it. Even got those background warnings, like, uh, store, do not store in extreme temperatures. Do not clean with benzene. So, anyway, nuts and milk here. All right, uh, it's going to go into our nest down here. In we go. Pop this baby on. Oh, wait, close it first. Oh, we have to connect it to the TV, right? Then pop it on and... The races we go. Nuts and milk. Oh, you know what I just realized? Yet again, I got to this point, didn't have my controller set up, so uh, bear with me for a moment here. All right, nuts and milk. So yes, um, one of the games that somebody recommended was nuts and milk. It didn't show up on any of the polls because I knew I wanted to play it, so it was my selection for the holiday uh, Nesmus games. It is an old school game. It reminds me of like Donkey Kong or something. I've never played it. Don't know anything about it. Classic Hudson Soft game. Let's hop in here and just figure out as we go. So, okay, I guess I am nuts. Is milk coming to kill me? Oh God, okay. <laughs> While we figured something out, the blue guy wants to, ki wants to murder you. Okay. So, Oh, and you can run off the side of the screen. Okay, that affects things. Oh, God. Okay. Run, run! Maybe I had to go on the spring there. All right, we're figuring stuff out. These old arcade games, I feel like it was... They were almost designed so that you would die really rapidly and have to insert a new quarter. So I don't know if this started out as an arcade game or what but i'm not surprised that you get like three lives and we've burned through them already run run you fool okay oh i guess we have to climb up here okay and this would be the last one. Oh my god and somebody has revealed themselves aha all right so I think we are milk, and I think nuts are coming for us. I could have a reversed, but I'm pretty sure we're milk. Um, all right. So yeah, the reason I picked this one is I just wanted to make sure it uh, survived. Uh, it made it through the voting and that we could actually play it. Um, oh God, because although I'm not like the best at these, uh, these sort of old arcadey style games, they definitely remind me of, like, the early days of Nintendo. Um, and I kind of like that. Um, okay, here we go. Alright, the nuts have opened the milk. Oh god. Huh! Oh, I was trying to jump, I was stuck on the ladder. Um, yeah, these, these like, one-screen platformers are really similar to old-school Donkey Kong, and I feel like... Just old school Nintendo had a lot more of these kinds of games. Um, one screen platformers, I feel like, don't exist as much. Oh, I think we have to go over this guy. Oh, I went to jump and it was too late. Um, they don't exist as much these days. I mean, there are some games like this, but I mean, a lot of platformers have shifted into uh, 
you know, being like multi-screen and having like more advanced mechanics and stuff. I can think of more puzzle games, more like platformer puzzle games that have stuck with the one screen uh, mechanic. Oh god. Man, it even has like the bonus thing that Donkey Kong had. I really wonder if this was programmed off of the Donkey Kong engine or something. Oh, this was Hudson Soft. Not Nintendo, but Hudson Soft did a lot of contract work for Nintendo porting their games to Famicom back in the day, so... I don't know. I don't know what the legacy of this is. Um... Okay, that didn't help anything. Let this guy kill himself. Oh god, he's coming for us! Oh no! Wow! Why is it so hard to, to, to do this? This is crazy. Whoa. What's he gonna do? You kind of have to trick him into killing himself. Or he's just stuck. Okay, he's coming for us. We got that one. Getting these two fruits is not the problem. It's... surviving afterwards. I have an idea. Let's lure him this way. Come get me, sucker! Give me just enough time to get past you! <laughs> Jumping over him seems like too difficult to move. Not good enough at it. So yes, Nuts and Milk, it sounded like a very, uh, you know, wholesome children's breakfast cereal. It also sounded like a completely disgusting, uh, you know, you, you know what I'm thinking with Nuts and Milk. Uh, oops. Um, oh, we, no bonus. So it could, could kind of go either way. But I think at a more innocent time, nuts and milk, nobody would have made those disgusting jokes that you guys, you perverts are thinking of right now. Oh, that worked out. Was not what I intended, but it worked out. We got this. Go, go! Don't just lie there like a lump. Nuts, or milk, whatever your name is. Your shit together. Okay, we can't jump up there. Okay, we can lure this guy up here and get our get our nanners, and then uh, I don't know what our end game here is. Our bonus is rapidly being chipped away. He's just camping. He's trolling the respawn. I think he can get us, though. See, if I go for this, he's definitely gonna kill me. We just have to hope. Okay, get up! And run. Oh, God. Off we go! Oh, come on! That was so close. Here we go. Boink! Oh, what the? What am I doing wrong there? I think he's stuck. He doesn't seem to be able to move. Oops. No, 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 no! <laughs> I even jumped over him and it didn't count. Oh, that sucks. I also am getting Burger Time vibes out of this. All right, we'll try the main game one more time and then let's check out what these other game modes are. What they are all about. Oh God, move. Now that I'm getting more comfortable with the idea of the game and, like, how you just have to control this, uh, you know, this dude here, the first level's actually a lot easier than it seemed at first. Like, once you get the hang of some of these games, they're not actually as hard as they seem. Okay, I don't know what that guy's doing there. Oh, he just killed himself. That's a freebie. We can just do that. Then we'll uh, lure you to your death a couple of times. Come get us, buddy. You know, I was watching uh, The Edge of Tomorrow the other day. I was actually, truthfully, watching YouTubers react to it, because I've seen the movie a few times. It's a good movie. Um, really cool sci-fi movie. It's Groundhog Day, but with a war. 
And without giving too much away, the whole premise is one of the characters is trapped in an infinite loop of having to fight the same battle over and over again. And that character gets really, really good at combat. Um... Oh god. Oh, we got him. Maybe Nuts and Milk are the two pink characters, and it's the blue guy. Maybe he's like... Bran. Or something. You know, what, whatever counters Nuts and Milk in a cereal. Um, and he's the bad stuff. Ah, uh, here he goes. Okay, so I don't know how to make that jump. I wanted to try an experiment while, uh... That guy was just... chumming around. GET UP! Oh, you have to press the jump button to actually wake up. I think if you just... I was tapping the arrow keys, it didn't help. But anyway, in the Edge of Tomorrow, uh, one character goes through war over and over and over and over again. And at first, the war is, like, terrifying and scary against these uh, aliens. But eventually, this character gets so good at combat that they're just, like, totally unfazed by it. Oh, God. Okay, how do we do this part? I will finish my thought in a moment, guys. Um, but yeah, eventually this character gets so good at combat that it's like they're just an expert. And a lot of people have referred to The Edge of Tomorrow sort of like, in a weird way, it's about speedrunning. Because this character has not only been through, like, battles, but the same battle with the same aliens in the same spot over and over again. Um, and so this character knows everything. Jeez, how do you do this? Everything there is to know about that battle knows where aliens are going to be, like, on any... at every... any particular second of the battle. And so that character's just, like, weaving in and out of stuff and doing these amazing moves and, like, anticipating movements. And it really is like a video game. Oh, you can jump extra high. You just really have to... time it. All right. I understand, game. Um, and anyway, how this relates to Nuts and Milk is... It kind of got me thinking that, like, in horror movies and stuff, um, the monsters and things that are fought in a lot of these, like, scary or intense movies are usually, yes, usually difficult because the characters don't understand them. But the Ghostbusters is, like, my primary example of, like, what would happen in, like, a scientific world with, if ghosts existed. Like, ghosts would be scary for, uh, you know, the, the first couple encounters. But then once you start encountering them, you identify their weaknesses. And then you develop systems for taking them out very rapidly. And then conquering ghosts becomes, like... A tr oh, I tried to jump there, but you can't jump on ropes. Conquering ghosts becomes, like as inconvenient as, like, wiping out rodents or something, you know? Like, it's- it's the- the- the things that aren't understood are the most difficult things to conquer. Once things are understood, they can usually be dealt with in an appropriate, uh, manner. Um, oh god. So, long story short, um, how Nuts and Milk got me thinking about this is because Nuts and Milk is a game I didn't understand until I started to try and play it here, and now the more I play it, the easier it seems. So there's this thing in video games where the first time you play a game, you don't know what's happening, you don't know what the rules are, you don't know how you're supposed to beat a level, and it's very hard. And as you uh, play more games, or play the same game over and over and get better and better at it, you start to be like, oh, these are the exploits. And so like this blue guy, where he used to get us on the first level, He's now, like, trivially easy to avoid on the first level because we know all his tricks. So it'd be the same as if you were fighting, I don't know, the Blair Witch or a ghost or whatever. It's like the first few encounters are scary and they probably will get the better of you. But once you learn their weaknesses, you learn their ins and outs. You're basically entering Ghostbusters or Edge of Tomorrow territory where, like, you know... In the, in the Edge of Tomorrow, when the character gets really good at combat, that character's, like, in combat. And when an alien, you know, uh, an alien gets shot, and then they think that the alien's dead, and the alien, like, kind of gets up, like, Rrr! and the character just shoots the alien dead more out of annoyance than anything. Like, he has an annoyed look on his face. Like, come on, die already, buddy. And that's the same look that gamers get when they're fighting, like, these horrifying, you know, uh, Lovecraftian demons from the darkest depths of all imagination. And we're just like, can you die already so I can get my level 7 sword? You're annoying me, you know? 
like, like uh, evil can become banal or boring almost once you understand it and once you know how to defeat it. So anyway, that's that, that's where nuts and milk has has led my thought process today, guys. Go figure. Um, but look, we found love. Nuts found milk. And nuts loves milk, and milk loves nuts. I guess I, I think the two pink characters are nuts and milk. I've now assume. Come on, there we go. Avoid that guy. All right, getting the bananas is a little tricky. Actually, no, it's not at all. And okay, now we just need to. Time this. Boink! Boink! Oh, perfect! Eat my nuts, milk boy. Or brand flake boy or whatever. Okay, this level we haven't passed yet. Um, okay, well that's a death trap. Let's get out of here. Maybe luring them up here is a good idea. And then, oh god, I am screwed now. Oh, jeez. Okay, falling into that pet that that pit is insta death. So, pro tip, don't do that. Okay, I'm just going to do this. Okay, the bananas are easy. And these first cherries are easy too. Oh, look at that. Oh, god. Get off that ladder, please. Did I jump on that guy's head? Oh, easy. Look at that! We Ghostbusters did them. Um, oh, I thought it was a blue guy for a second. Oh, whoops. Okay. Well... Oh, God! Okay, you actually have to jump on that trampoline. It doesn't bounce you high enough. I'm not very good at using these trampolines. Boink. Come and get me! Bluey. Okay, so... Ah! God! Ah! Oh, it is so hard to actually do that jump. Okay, there it is. Alright, um... Lure him all the way over here. Psych! Okay, and then we'll lure him back. Give us time to experiment with this trampoline. Oh, there we go. Jeez. I think one of the buttons allows you to jump extra high, and the other doesn't. Okay. Got it. He's lured. Oh, God. I think we got it. Hey, that- the world spelled nuts. I'm just noticing that now. And milk. This one spells milk. This one I did actually notice. Oh, that guy just suicided. Okay. So... Whoops. Oh god. Oh god! Oh god. Oh, that worked! That somehow worked. We almost screwed that one up! Oh! Oh, God! Run! Oh! Get out of here! Oh, he's coming for us. Uh-oh. Oh, thank God. He screwed it up. Oh, no! Oh, God. Hey. Oh! Oh, we screwed it up. Oh, my God. This is actually really intense. Okay, he killed himself. That's good. Okay. Jump. Jump? Jump. Ah! Shoot. It, it, those trampolines are actually a little hard to, uh... It, it's hard to land the, the double jump. Like, I don't know what it is. I feel like... My controller's, like, not jumping when I want to jump. Ah! You, are you kidding me? Oh, no! Fuck! Alright, well, we know how that level would be finished. That was weird! I feel like I was definitely pressing the jump button at times, but my controller wasn't doing it. Um, I want to know what this editor mode is. Oh my god, you can edit nuts and milk. 
Whoa. This is like Mario Maker before Mario Maker, so we could just trap this guy. <laughs> there we go. Level edited. Now what happens? Oh my god! <laughs> they actually let you do that. Oh, look how hard this level is. That's wild. I- I have honestly never heard of a game this old, allowing you to just- Well, I, I guess Excite Bike. That one did allow you to edit levels. Like, I just dies of a lonely heart, stuck in his prison of tubes. <laughs> okay, well, I don't want to keep going here. Plus, just suicide. I, uh, wanted to see what mode B was. Also, for that editor, can you go to different levels? Or can you only edit the first level? I'm just kind of curious. These little nuts and milk guys look a little bit like Pac-Man ghosts, actually. A okay, game editor. Okay. Game editor. I don't know, like, there's- it's an NES controller, there's so many- so many buttons. So select changes, like, what you're placing. And then, uh... I don't know what you would press. B? Okay, B doesn't do anything. Oh no, wait, B changes what you're placing. Okay, I don't quite understand. Yeah, I'm trying everything. I don't know if you can switch levels or not. It might be possible, but it's beyond the scope of today. Today's lesson class. In game mode B... I like how we've made the first level, like, stupidly easy for ourselves. Oh, what is this? Oh, it's a bonus. <laughs> it would either kill us or give us points. Oh, look at this. What's this? Oh, it's bad. Helicopter good. Zeppelin balloon bad. Now we know. Bananas. So is game mode B, it just gives you like more things spawn and you have an opportunity for bonuses and stuff? Seems... so. Just give this level a little bit of time, see what happens. Oh, that... it's coming for us. Like I did a pretty advanced move up there. Whoa, hold on. I feel like the AI is better in this mode. Like, maybe it's just me, but he was, like, jumping around, doing more advanced stuff. Let's just see. Oh, we missed the helicopter. Ugh! Oh, God! That fireball almost took us out. We found love in the age of nuts and milk, folks. Okay, what do we got going on here? Let's see what he does. Uh, he seems pretty basic. Maybe, maybe he just got lucky in the previous level. Like, he seems as dumb as, dumb as ever. Anyway, alright, well, this has been Nuts and Milk, uh, one of the games, uh, that was selected for our Holiday Nesmus special. Um, and, uh, we'll let that just play on here. My Christmas specials have ended. i turn them back on for our sign-off here. Where's the other one? Here we go. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have been enjoying the Nesmus, uh, festivities so far. Um, we can even zoom in on, uh... California Raisins here for our sign-off. Let's turn it up and listen to what these guys have to say. Um, guys, if you've been enjoying the Nesmus special, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, all that stuff. But otherwise, I will be here hanging out in my 80s, 90s-tastic room, waiting, uh, waiting for the next video. So, uh, we'll see you guys soon. And, uh, till then. Peace! 
eat my nuts, milk boy.